Welcome. The fifth centenary of the birth of St. Teresa of Avila has been the occasion of much celebration in the Carmelite family throughout the world. The Order as a whole has been rereading the writings of the saint over the past six years and there has been a proliferation of new writing on Teresa as well as countless seminars and conferences in every part of the world where the Carmelite Order finds itself and beyond too because Teresa is a doctor of the church and as such she belongs to the whole church. Now, Father Greg Homing is an Australian Carmelite and is part of the Anglo-Irish province of Discalced Carmelites. He has lectured extensively on Carmelite spirituality in his native Australia and further afield too in places like New Zealand and Western Samoa. He was also invited to this part of the world to give seminars on Teresa in both Ireland and England, uh, mostly to our own friars and nuns, but in larger gatherings too. In this presentation that you are about to see, uh, Father Greg reflects on how what Teresa calls the sacred humanity of Christ became a pathway for her to come to terms with her struggles in prayer and also opened up a new and fruitful avenue of spiritual growth. Father Greg. I would like to speak about the significance of St. Teresa's humanity and the humanity of Christ in her spirituality. One very striking feature about St. Teresa's spirituality is that Christ is not something or someone external to her. Jesus Christ is not a model that she strives to emulate, nor is he a goal which is somehow in the distance for her to, to approach. Rather, in St. Teresa's spirituality, Jesus Christ is firmly situated within her, and her spiritual journey is that slow movement of her person within herself to where Christ is. As we consider St. Teresa's spirituality, perhaps the, the first thing that we need to specify is that we can't begin to think about her without addressing the fact that she is a woman with great weakness. Within our Carmelite spirituality, weakness has a very important part to play. Indeed, I would go so far as to say that any spirituality which does not give an appropriate place for weakness, temptation and sin is certainly not a spirituality which I would consider a serious spirituality and one that can really lead me to God. Because our human condition and our experience of ourself is a condition founded on the experience not simply of virtue and goodness and truth, but the struggle to be virtuous, good and true, which means that underlying so much human experience is the experience of our inability to be good, virtuous and true. Our human experience so often is grounded in an experience quite simply of my inability and my weakness. And that experience, I think, is a foundational experience in the spirituality of our Holy Mother, St. Teresa. St. Teresa struggled, as most people do, with her sinfulness, her, her great desires, and yet her inability to live up to those desires, to live according to those desires. In fact, she very much falls in line with St. Paul, who, who speaks about the desire of the soul and yet the desires of the flesh. St. Teresa speaks about this in the second mansions of her great work, The Interior Castles when she says, when I was about the things of God, my mind was constantly returned to the things of the world. When I had to engage in the world, my mind was going constantly back to God. We can situate that very really in her own experience of her sinfulness. And this, I think, is the beginning of our, our recognition of the power of her spirituality. Carmelite spirituality does not propose perfection as something which is simply attainable by human effort. The Carmelite spirituality is grounded in a desire born of the love of God, which spurs me on in the midst of my own failure and my own inability, 
and calls me forward in spite of my own experience of not being able to love God and to love my neighbour, not to give up and somehow to depend upon the grace and the mercy of God. As we look at St. Teresa's life, one thing which, which emerges very strongly is that insofar as she struggled with herself, she found that her own weakness led her to Christ. There is a very beautiful passage in chapter 9 of the Book of the Life where St. Teresa gives something of her method of prayer. This is not a technique of prayer, but whenever she mentions method of prayer, fundamentally she is saying, there were times when I couldn't pray, and when I couldn't pray, this is what I did. All students of St. Teresa, I believe, need to be aware of this, because when she says, I couldn't pray, we have to read very carefully, very attentively, to recognise what she did when she couldn't pray. But I think the first thing we need to notice is what is it that stopped her from praying? In chapter 9 of the Book of Life, she says, this was my method. And so we have to ask, what is happening in chapter 9 in which we find that she can't pray? She is, in chapter 9 of the life, overwhelmed with difficulties, problems, anxieties and worries something which we all know very well, that our mind and our emotions somehow are not within our control and in our daily life, in our life of trying to live charitably and virtuously, we find ourselves unable to. And then when we go to prayer, we also find that our mind and our emotions and our feelings, our fears, our worries take over and we can't pray. This is what St. Teresa is speaking about when she says she couldn't pray in chapter 9 of the Book of the Life. But we have to look at it more deeply. We have to ask her, why is it that you are overwhelmed with worries and concerns in such a way that you couldn't pray? And I believe her answer would be quite simply this, this is my personality. You see, I think that what stops us from praying is not passing trivial distractions but the real impediments to my ability to pray consist of the way the world in which I live, the way the context of my life so impinges upon me as to be a cross and it's a cross which I bear according to my personality and so when she says I couldn't pray she was suffering under the weight of what it was to be Teresa. Notice what she does. She says, I would enter within myself and find Jesus already there within myself in the garden, who, like me, was overwhelmed with worry, anguish and fear. It's, it's a very nice thing for her to say, but we need to, to consider what is it that's really happening here. St. Teresa recognises that her relationship with Jesus Christ is one of friendship and he, as her best friend, simply wants to be with her the way she is. There's an extraordinary stroke of genius here because so many theologians try to explain why it is that the second person of the Blessed Trinity, why it is that the Son of God became a human being. St. Teresa knows why. Friendship reveals this to her. He became a human being so as to share her experience of what it is to be human, so as to take to himself her humanity so that he could be with her in her struggles. And this is, I think, one of the most profound things we learn from the teachings of St. Teresa on prayer. She couldn't pray and she recognised that what she needed to do was not to run away from her inability to pray, but to recognise her inability. The cause of her inability, in fact, opened for her the way to Christ because he was there waiting for her in the manner in which she found herself 
because he loved her. Or in other words, St. Teresa's experience of her own humanity brought her to Christ. I suppose with this gives us, in many ways, the true meaning of that wonderful passage in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Come to me, all you who labour and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Notice what Jesus says in this. He doesn't say, come to me and I will take away your burden. But come to me in your burden and learn from me, take my yoke. He is saying, come to me because I have the same burden as you. Take my yoke, share my burden and learn from me how to carry your burden. Learn from me how to be you. Learn from me how to be human. We share the humanity. So St. Teresa says, what well, I couldn't pray. At a certain point she learned that her inability to pray led her to a certain place within herself which, which, in other words, introduced her to Jesus, enabled her to meet the Lord. And she said, I would go there and sit there and look at him and be with him. This, I, I think, is, is at the core of the prayer of our Holy Mother St. Teresa. That I, in my struggles, in the things that, over which, uh, about which I have no control, the things which seem initially to be challenges that demand that I get rid of these things, and as I struggle to, to live constantly in the presence of God as she did, I recognize that I can't change my humanity, I can't change the person of myself. And I begin to see at last that my humanity draws me into myself, not away from God, but so as to meet the one who shares my humanity. I share my humanity with Christ. That's what St. Teresa recognised. And so the humanity of Christ becomes for her the one essential component of her spiritual life. In chapter 22 of the book of the life, she says that the humanity of Christ is that without which we cannot live the life of prayer. It is the sine qua non. It is what is necessary. Such a great friend we have. And she calls us to him. And she asks us to look into his eyes. Rather than to turn in shame from our experience of ourselves. To let go of our selfish response to ourselves. So as to experience the truth of myself but not look at myself to experience the truth of myself and allow this experience to lead me to the common experience of weakness that I share with Christ. And as she did, not to look at myself, which is fundamentally a movement of pride and selfishness, but to look at him who was suffering the same thing, to learn from him how to be myself. And in this experience, come to know and love Jesus Christ. The spirituality of St. Teresa, I'm not an expert in many things, but I, I would hazard a, a guess that of all the great Christian spiritualities, her path of prayer is certainly, I think, has to be one of the most Christocentric, because without Christ she cannot pray. And so the purpose of her life then is to live a life in which she becomes the best friend of the one for whom she is the best friend. Do you remember that in the beginning of the interior castles, in the first paragraph of the first chapter of the first mansions, St. Teresa quotes, and she says, For daughters, you, you must realize that the soul of the just person is nothing more than a paradise in which God takes his delight. This is written, as we know, from the found moments of union, of spiritual marriage that we have 
in the seventh mansion. And in that she is not reporting, but I believe she is saying to us what her beloved said to her in the moments of intimacy which she shared with him. And I would read it this way. Daughter Teresa, your soul is nothing more than a paradise in which I take my delight. The Carmelite spirituality calls us to that experience, to the experience of who I am as known and loved by God. And hence, within our experience of our humanity, made real and made beautiful through the humanity of Christ, I'm called to one most wonderful thing, which is what St. Teresa speaks of as humility. I'm called to know myself as known and loved by God. I'm called to struggle to bring my own human experience of my broken humanity into the presence of Christ. And as I bring it into his presence, he brings me to the point of recognition that this which I am is loved perfectly and immensely by Christ. And I come to know myself as the one known and loved by God. The call then, the challenge for the Carmelite is to live that which is experienced. That is the wonderful challenge as a Carmelite to know and love myself, which is what humility is, as God knows and loves me. The call of the Carmelite life is to bring about a certain proportion, correspondence and unifying of myself and God, the living God. This is, for her, the place of humanity. This is who Jesus Christ is. I'd like to end with a very simple statement then. For St. Teresa, her humanity mediates God. Christ, God, the living God, is, is something about which she has an experience. It's something which she knows about externally. But internally she knows God because her very humanity is what mediates the love of God. Her very humanity mediates the love of God as the love of God enters into her weakness. And as her dear friend, St. John of the Cross, would say, her weaknesses and her wounds now, in this relationship of the experience of the love of God, become not now brokenness, but wounds which reveal the love of God. Or as John of the Cross say, wounds of love itself. And therefore, in a Carmelite spirituality, as given to us by St. Teresa, my very humanity, if I struggle to live as best I can the life of virtue and what is I'm called to live, if I never give up and struggle to live this in my experience of my brokenness in the presence of God, then that very humanity in which I struggle would be that through which I would experience the love of Christ, I would experience the living God. Because in the end, St. Teresa says, your humanity mediates God. It mediates God intimately and within. And it draws you within so that you will enter within yourself and meet Jesus Christ. Thank you.